This is a radio broadcast from the Good Boys Gone Bland. Seek shelter now. Hello and welcome to Good Boys Gone Bland, Season 7, Episode 6, Geostorm. I'm your co-host, Denali. Uh, I'm the original Ryan. Geostorm! No, you're Geostorm? No, I'm Jace, but... I... Jaso Storm! Jaso Storm! And, joining us today, a good friend oh. of ours, a roommate of mine for many years, and now... Uh, kind of a, a weeb, I think. Ryan Ball. <laughs> not not just kind of confirmed. Yeah, that's, it's totally fine to like anime, Ryan Ball. Yeah. Um, I'm realizing this this may create a problem. Not the anime thing, but your name is a lot like the name of one of our hosts. I was um, going to wanna... wait till we were on recording to address this because obviously mm. this comes up every time I think of him. Okay, so it's, should we should we squash this right now? Like to, um, in my brain, he okay. he has like one singular name. It's just Ryan Ball. Like like I work with a guy. Who, same thing. We we say his first right. and last name together. It is a one syllable name. We're uh, Ryan Ball. kind of doxing yeah. him, aren't we, <laughs> by <laughs> using his first and oh, last fuck. name? We'll bleep it out every single let time me, we say okay, it. Okay, let me just Google his first and last name real quick and just see. Oh my it's god! A, I'm pretty sure it's a guitar player. He's number one. Oh my god! Fashion model, lawyer. What? There's well, tons there of these go. guys. He's fine. Right. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Now ah. people know he's not a fashion model or a lawyer. Well, mm-hmm. well, did, no. I never confirmed that. I was oh, just listing true. off yeah. his accolades. Oh shit! Um, did I blow it? Ryan, Ryan Ball. Do you have a preferred like name? Do you have a thing what you want us to call could call you? Uh, honestly, no. I've just been called so many different things. Yeah. Um, Loser. <laughs> that's been one of them. That's what I get a lot. <laughs> Loser, disappointment, <laughs> failure. Uh, you yep, would yep, absolutely her, her hate Ry Ry Cutie. Yeah, that's definitely up there for uh, least favorite. Okay, all right. Oh, well, that's, that's a lot of that, We can use that then for me. Mostly Great. mostly just because of how it got mantled to me was, yeah, had no connection to myself at all. It was just the name. Yeah, it was somebody okay. else's nickname. <laughs> God damn. Well, all right. Well, we'll have none of that on here, Ryan. We're, we're so happy to have you on as a guest. Um, so have you listened to the show before? You don't have to lie, okay? You can just say if you've never listened. I was actually a day one listener. A day one? Day one, day one episode one. Woo! Wow. Jace, you found I'm, us a day one. C- can we uh, Can we just take a moment yeah. to apologize? <laughs> like, we're so only, sorry. Not we're only was it Daredevil, but like we did not know what we were doing. Let's make it clear we still don't. But we've come a long way. Hey, man, I got to watch the progress. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I mean, you get yeah, it. You, You've been through so much, Ryan Ball, and we appreciate you sticking with us. Um, and, and now it's it's full circle. Now you get to be a part of the show mm-hmm. uh, for this episode, for this for this review. So I mean, what's it like? You know, seeing it from the inside. You know, is what's it, what's it's uh it's definitely a unique beep. experience. That's for sure. <laughs> Redacted. Uh, Don't tell them about the thing. <laughs> it was great. I had Just, a lot of fun. Especially, I think, recently. Yeah. I don't think I've watched a, like, watched a movie to try and be critical about it. Mm. I've just, yeah. like, watched uh, movies to put something in front of my face for a couple hours. It kind of ruins it, doesn't it? Uh, just <laughs> watching a movie and knowing you have to do a report on it later. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of high school. Yeah. Like, anytime they gave me a book to read, I didn't want to read it. Yeah, know? it was, it, it's it's kind of fucked up when we're, like, kind of in our off time. Um, when we're watching movies just for fun, at least for me, when I'm watching it, I'm like, I can't turn that off anymore because 99% of the movies I watch is for this fucking show. Um, yeah, I found myself um, a couple times wanting to to pick up my phone because of the movie. And then I would, as soon as I unlocked it, I was like, nope, I got to lock it. I got I to gotta commit. <laughs> You're working, baby. Uh- <laughs> well, it, it's, it's strange to me because mm-hmm. uh, are you implying that you weren't absolutely enthralled <laughs> by Gerard Butler's yeah, screen yeah, yeah, yeah. presence. Let's not fucking review the show. We uh, don't review this early. Okay, let's break the ice a little bit because I know it's awkward and nerve wracking for our guests to come on. And, and you know, I know it's like weird to meet your heroes. Um, but like, <laughs> do you have like I don't know, like a favorite member of the show or a favorite episode <laughs> or possibly both? Just no pressure. I I do gotta say, yeah. um, the the first episode Daredevil was actually. The only As, one you listen to? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I listened to the first two seasons and I fell off okay. for a little bit. That's okay. Um, we did too. Yep. Two but seasons <laughs> is a lot. <laughs> the 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 first uh, the the first episode Daredevil was definitely um, it's kind of like watching watching a fire burn, you know? Yeah, just can't get enough. It's like a punk band, you know? We're just uh... <laughs> okay. Who's your favorite member? Just quickly, Mys- off the, don't even think. Myself, obviously. God damn yeah, it, I keep forgetting fair. to yeah, have them. Yeah, did yeah, Joe yeah, say yeah. that too? That. Yeah, he, I mean, yeah. Jesus. Hey, um, man, Joe I mean, and I'm, Michael I, got us. I'm in that. the box here. I'm in that corner. That's true. Equality. You're being recorded. You Who's know, your favorite deli dude? That yeah, are you familiar with our, cut. Our, our, our lore? Our lore? <laughs> I, I'm yeah, not familiar with this part of the lore. Yeah, it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, well, let's, let's see what he thinks about it. It's like a series of deli superheroes. Don't describe it like that. <laughs> deli superheroes all right deli I'm superheroes they cry salami uh one guy cries salami um another guy i think he's made of mayo he's like sandman from spider-man but he's like mayo um i think moses is in there and he cuts the meats <laughs> that was the last decided. episode yeah i think so um uh, so some of the better ones lettuce head right lettuce, lettuce night. night lettuce night sorry okay well, see, look at me i don't even he know he grows lettuce armor like a suit of armor but he can and- also like surf on his lettuce and he can like fly lettuce. with his lettuce how are these hitting for you just one to ten uh i well i gotta say you know the one that i'm highly disgusted in is the um the comparison to sandman from spider-man yeah. being mayonnaise it's, it's pretty good of, mayo yeah. man he, yeah, he that's, also that's gets a little, he also follows in some sort of like particle accelerator yeah, yeah it's, I, <laughs> it's and somebody's a eating a mayo tub. sandwich someone's eating a ham sandwich yeah. i haven't put the ham on yet is that is the generator in the back of the deli it's like the power went out and they had to kick it up. And for some reason, it was a, you know, nuclear reactor. Let, Lettuce Night's definitely the uh, probably the the most, I would say. Yeah. Intriguing. Well, okay. wait till you hear about, about the about other uh, self-propelled deli Shit dude. Storm. <laughs> Shit Storm is not in the deli dudes, okay? What? He's, he's the he's guy who fucking, cleans the toilet. He's a villain. He's, uh, okay. I don't want to oh, belabor Shit, this. I thought Shit Storm was our ace in the hole, like uh, Captain Marvel. I guess, I guess, sort Ugh. of. I mean, this is our Geo Storm episode. People want to hear about the fucking movie. Now we got to explain Shit Storm. <laughs> um, okay, his briefly, his butt is a portal to the shit dimension. It's where like a, you know, there's nothing but shit in that dimension, and it just flies out of his butt with like these butt flaps he has, and he can fly with it, and you know, of course, blast his enemies at supersonic speeds. Um, any thoughts? Is, is the shit dimension just a sewer? No, 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 no. There's no okay. space. Okay. It's okay. every atom is shit. Oh, that's t- that's why it flies out. Yeah, yeah, that's an intriguing uh, power. I would definitely not want to want to get caught against that exactly. guy. Exactly. You hear that? Yeah. You hear Thank that, you. villains? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you better watch out. I don't know if I'd involve him in like any kind of deli that I was incorporated with. I wouldn't. That's why we only the- call him in when there's a real shit hitting the fan. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So, so to speak. Um. Well, great. Now you know the deli dudes. <laughs> uh, great. Is there is there like um you know was there a thing you wanted to accomplish on our show today, Ryan Ball? You know, was there was there something you wanted to say on air or like uh, or something you wanted to plug? Like, what's your what's your fucking motive what's your for coming on here? My what's motive for coming game? on, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. is to kill time on Sunday, man. To kill time. I, I, I love. I wanted it. to be on a podcast. Yeah. This is my only. I think shot i got right now <laughs> so who knows maybe i'll take this this baby step and i'll use you guys to to find my my ultimate glory of owning my own podcast one day yeah turns out they let anybody create an account and upload the audio so <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i heard you guys on spotify that's like the real deal right yeah we're, we are on spotify we're in a lot of places we've been known as a stepping stone podcast so uh you're welcome um but but with that like i do want to kind of uh ease you into our season so we've, um, you know, Ryan won our Wheel of Chaos uh, last state of the podcast, and we've been doing apocalypse movies, uh, you know, movies that feature the end of the world. Um, obviously, Geostorm was one of those. We can talk about that. But I kind of wanted to uh, do a little activity involving the four of us, a little quizzical, if you will, about the end of the world, about natural disasters, which was the, the key point of the end of the world in this movie so have you guys all been to school before like you've been to like the the classes where they talk about physical science once or twice you might say okay this question was for ryan ball like passively um okay cool so like we're gonna go through these questions and it's gonna be how much you remember from school guys Ooh, okay okay um 
Now we've been through core, we've been through virus, we've been through mm-hmm. moon falling, mm-hmm. but how much you know about disaster? So this is a quiz, uh, Ryan, we do quizzes on this show in case you're not familiar. Um, you'll be part of this quiz. You'll get a chance to earn points and, and, and hold the trophy uh, as the winner for the day. Now, Jace, okay. I think you have one more win above our Ryan here. So uh, is that right? I don't know. I'm, guys, I know that I'm the one? crowd favorite, um, you, you, and that yeah, the I mean, fans I normally cheer for me, and in my glory, they bask when yeah, I answer kind of the, the million heel. point question. Yeah, Ryan is the heel. I'm, I'm the all... heel by just right. you know knowing this information <laughs> okay. and not uh, yeah. blindly guessing. <laughs> question one from our natural disaster quiz. Um, I'll have is it multiple choice. It's multiple choice, but there's other little curveballs in here. Okay, um, I'll have Ryan Ball start this. Okay, let's go. Hit me. Question one, you're going to answer first. So the tornado intensity scale is called what? A, the Friedrich scale. B, the vortex scale. C, the big sucko spinny scale. (laughs) Or D, the Fujita scale. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's A, the Friedrich scale. The Friedrich scale. Okay, uh, Jace? Oh, we all. um... (laughs) You guys all answer. D. Okay. Ryan? Uh, yeah. That's, I think it's A. You think it's A. Um, the correct answer is D, the Fujita scale. Oh. One point J's. Who oh, no. Okay. I knew it started with an F. That was it. Yeah. It's, um, so you guys are going to have to keep track of your own points here um, because I have no ability to do that. Whoa. Me. So, so I, I got two. Yeah. That's one. <laughs> okay. We're all tied. Question two. How many? This is, okay. This is for Jace to answer first. So this is going to be kind of tough. You guys are going to have to give me, like, Price is Right number style. How many tornadoes hit the U.S. each year? Okay? So, Jace, I'm going to let you throw down the first numby. Can you give me a do, do, do? No, they're probably a DMCA. Oh, DMC, 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 yeah. Give it to me in, like, a do, da, de, do. We can do a Seinfeld, because that's all improv. Um, I feel like he'd sue me. I feel like Jerry Seinfeld would sue me. Yeah, he's very litigious. I'm going to go with... Do you want a hint? No. Okay. I'm going to go with... God, Jace takes forever. Jesus Christ. The crowd is fucking dying over here. I'm going to go with 73. 73. Okay. Ryan. So the question was touchdown? Yeah, Jesus, Ryan. It's it's how many hit the U.S., okay? I, I don't know. Well, does the U.S. airspace count? I don't know, man. I just... 403. I got this. 403. Okay, mm. thank you. And then Ryan Ball... How many? How many of these uh, dang things? Is, is this Price is Right style? So close without going over? Um, I suppose, but we do. Um, you know, we do have a bit of an it honor is, system here. I almost here. said seventy-four. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna go with a hundred. Nice, cool. Okay, a hundred. room. Yeah, that's good sport. Um, so we have seventy-three, four hundred and three, and a hundred. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Hundred and thirteen uh, was my first guess, but I explained that. Okay. The correct answer is a thousand. Oh. Ryan gets a point here. 1,000 tornadoes hit the U.S. Yeah, each year. Yeah, I knew it was I a actually, lot. Freaking, wow. I almost got killed by one, remember? I don't remember. What, you you remember? got hit by a tornado. A couple oh, years wait, ago, we were doing the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're in New York. In New York? Yeah. Oh. Wow. I didn't know they were there. That's crazy. Yeah, I heard somewhere that the U.S. actually has like most of the world's tornadoes here just because of the weird yeah, we have the craziest layout. Weather. We, yeah, have, we have the most yeah. extreme weather anywhere in the world. Question three. Uh, this is this will be for for Ryan to answer first. True or false? Scientists estimate about a hundred and fifty thousand earthquakes occur each year. T or F? Uh, T. I don't know. It's not like an above or below, so I'll just go T. It's a fucking lot. Okay, Ryan Ball. What do you what? think? It's obviously false. Scientists don't know what they're talking about. I like oh, it. He got I like me. it. Uh, Jace, going with true on this one. True. The correct answer is falserino. The uh, actual amount is about a half a million. Oh, wait, so what? There's a lot of fucking earthquakes. How does that question wait, make sense? How is that false? <laughs> <laughs> I asked if that statement I was saying oh, was true or false. Not more than. I mean, All one right? scientist. I, said, more, I thought you said there are more than 100,000. I said estimate about 150,000. Oh. I is that statement true or false? Legally, Ryan Ball has to get this point. All right? We are... Mm. One and one and one. one. What's our about scale? Because, you know, like the earth is like about however many billion years old. So I think within the earthquake scale, it's pretty close. I said each year, right? Each year. Let's just go on the next question, please. Question four. Is Ryan winning? I think I only have one point. Yeah, he's fucking winning. 
Well, I, I stole a point the first round because Denali said I was keeping track of my own, so I gave myself a point. That's Shit. fair. So I have two. That's I, just I crafty. Think, I think if we want to go by math, I think we're you guys are all tied just because oh. he hasn't been on here before. Mm-hmm. So um, Ryan Ball is winning. Uh, for the largest volcano in the solar system, okay, guys? The solar system is all of the dang planets that rotate around our big old soul in the sky. Uh, a, Mauna Loa, B, Olympus Mons, C, LV-142, or D, Hell's Tower. Uh, Jace, I'm going to have you answer this one first. Olympus Mons. <laughs> Olympus Mons. Uh, B, Ryan. I think, is what I went with. Wait, yes. Is, I go next? Yeah, it's Olympus Mons. Olympus Mons. Unless Ryan you found Ball. some weird. Uh, I'm going to go with that weird LV one, because that sounds like some weird space science name for a volcano. Yes, He's Large right. Volcano 142. Um, well, I tricked you. It is Olympus Mons. Uh, Jace Damn. and Ryan get a point each, so we are now all tied up. Ooh. It, this is... What yeah. the... Is that the one on Mars? It's on it's Mars. Mars. It's as big I as Nebraska. That, I learned that on The Martian. The, hmm. the, the book about the, the funny guy who, who lives. Well, this was a uh, quiz about what we're supposed to learn in school. Question five. <laughs> How many people are struck by lightning each year? Okay? This is going to be another Price is Right number guessing game. Okay? Uh, Ryan, of our show, <laughs> what... Uh, what do you think? Just give me a number. 403. 403. Thousand. A year? Yeah, a year. 4,030. 4,030. The year we make contact. Ryan Ball. Uh, let's go with 8,008. 8,008. <laughs> Just guys. All right, fellas. Okay. Uh, Jace. Um, I think the odds of it happening are like one in like 15 million or something maybe a mm-hmm. bit higher than that so right. times the population times yeah, multiplied yeah. by the oh, population math. of math, our baby. what are we we passed eight billion i think we're ready earlier. Billion, yeah ryan um you have some experience with math what's the number that i'm going for here <laughs> not that kind of math eight billion yes it's got to be lower divided than that by it would be eight thousand divided by 15 million yes right are Which you like a math is... scientist ryan math ball a lot what? Oh, it's 800 not a human calculator divided by it's like 5,000 5. it's like 5,000 something I don't know I want to have These the people right. 8,000 divided by 15 is like oh it's like 500 stop 15. helping him Ryan oh god I accidentally opened win. up a calculator um, 8,000 divided by 569 funny number 569 people get struck by lightning each year well Ryan Ball you are uh, the closest it is 240,000 people oh, wow. get struck by lightning a wow. year, which is what? fucking insane. 240? <laughs> it's just, well, now, are we sure that's like individual people? I think it's the same guy, mostly. Um, ah! <laughs> suck. I, I think normally it's it's only like about five or 600. Um, okay, so uh, what are we at now? I think we're, e- are we evened out again? I'm getting nervous. I'm no. running out of questions. Ryan has... Two plus one. And that's that's what all you guys have. No, I have two. No, he's winning by one point. Okay, Ryan Ball winning by one point. And I just, I want to say, um, I don't want you to think of the, uh, you know, the crutch I gave you as as like a thing you got to lean on. So if you win by one point, does it really count? I don't yeah. know. It's up to the audience. It freaking so, counts, uh, qu- uh, okay. because I'm right. tired of you guys coming up with yeah. this freaking... <laughs> I don't want you guys to make up all these rules and then at the end be like, well, not counting the rules you made up because you've been making up rules to take victories away from me for seven what seasons now. What are rules, really? Um, question six. <laughs> the coldest temperature, brr, under natural conditions was negative 128.6 Fahrenheit. Where was this recorded? A, Vostok, Antarctica. B, Yakutsk, Russia. C, Bismarck, North Dakota, or D, Station Nord, Greenland. Uh, who's uh, who's uh, supposed to answer this first? Ryan Ball? I believe so. Um, we'll go with Greenland. Greenland. Jace, what do you think? The coldest dang place on Earth uh, under natural conditions. I think in the lab they got it to like fucking, what, like almost absolute zero? Yeah, like point zero zero one Kelvin away or something. Pretty recently, too. Never heard of him. Um... I'm going to go with uh, the uh, Russia, B? Yakutsk, Russia. Yakutsk. 
And uh, Ryan? So it's not North Dakota. But Greenland beat some sort of record rather recently. It might be this record. Yakutsk is the coldest like city on Earth. But Vostok, Lake Vostok is that place where they're doing all the coring down into the subterranean lake in Antarctica. So, Alien versus Predator? Pretty much. Next season, I'm, baby. I'm just going to go that. Russia. Or not. No, sorry. No, Lake, Lake Vostok. The Russian Vostok, Lake. Antarctica uh, is the correct answer. Coldest temperature ever mm. recorded. That is one point. Ryan. I, I, so let's not. Let's be real. I, I spend a lot of time on Wikipedia. Didn't you do a report on Lake Vostok in high school? Maybe. I remember you talking about it. I think. I was like, oh, shit. I, think, I bet she's going to fucking get this one. Uh, okay. So what are we at points wise? <laughs> I'm a terrible host. Where the the two Ryans are tied. The two Ryans are tied. This is going to be the tiebreaker question. It's the last question I have. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pull one points? out my ass. Wait, so what? Jace can win? Yeah. Can get, oh, so it's like that's true. That's true. No, no. Ooh. Okay. I don't want him to just sit out. This will be a thousand points. Okay. This will be a thousand points. It will be a really healthy margin if you get this one. Okay. Do, do points carry over to the next time I'm on the episode? No, no. But mm. like, if you can say you won with a thousand point margin. Okay. Because cool. um, I think Jace won once with a one trillion point margin. Yeah. Up there. Um, during our Anne Hathaway season, and that was yeah, a, yet to beat that. Like that's a pretty good insane. plus minus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It took a long time. Um. Okay. Question seven. The hottest, who, temperature ever recorded, was 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Where was this recorded? Uh, A, El Bayad, Algeria. B, Mitraba, Kuwait. C, Lytton, British Columbia, or D, Furnace Creek, California. Ryan, what do you think about the hottest temperature on Earth? Me? Yeah. Uh, Furnace Creek, baby. Furnace Creek. Ryan Ball. That's in the name. We'll go with, uh, we'll go with A. With A. El Bayad, Algeria. Uh, Jace, what do you think? Furnace Creek. Furnace Creek. Uh, Jace and Ryan are correct with Furnace Creek, Dang. California. Both Sounds you guys like some collusion. Get a, that one. <laughs> a thousand I've been points. There. You've been to Death Valley? It burns. Oh, didn't you have to go on that trip? Yeah. I had to go do testing there. Yeah. I was just secret. actually on the Wikipedia page uh, for this because I'm, I was planning a trip down to SoCal. So. so was that a tie? Was that a tie match? I'm down by one point. No, Ryan, I win you, by a yeah, I win by, by one point. It's a thousand and three to a thousand two. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Ball sucks though. He's a thousand points hey, behind. Man, I was gonna donate you my free point, but now you can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a cheater. I don't want it. Listen, Ryan Ball, don't feel bad, but that is that is the biggest margin of loss we ever had for a guess. A uh, thousand points. But um, I gotta the say, only man, reason. It, okay, let's be real clear, because the only reason. I won. It's because there's a guest here, and you guys are keeping the rigging down to a minimum. Well, <laughs> there's no rigging. Well, I hope um, you guys, the audience, learned something today about natural disasters. And maybe we can do something uh, to avoid them, like build a sick space station one day. With that, do you guys want to get into the movie? Kind of. I kind of do. You want to sure. talk about Geostorm? Or the name of our episode, Geostorm? Because we're the GBGBs. Oh, Storm. you're making. Okay, oh, I thought it was like a. We're like the Jeep. I missed that. Jeep, or, yeah. We could just call this episode Jeepo Storm and try and get that cool sponsor cast. The sponsor, the sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've been. And then, yeah. and then afterwards, you're like, look, we put the good, good word out for the Jeep. Yeah. We can uh, change right. our name to the Jeep BGBs for a, yeah. a, a Jeep season. BGBs. I like that. I like that. Ryan Ball, do, uh, what do you think about that? Like, do you, is, do you have any ideas for us to make more money on this show? Because we've been, it's been a dearth of money, I think, for this podcast. I, the, I think the sponsorship route's the way to go. And I think these, these great play on words, man. These are great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any, what do you, what's, Ryan, what's your area of expertise? Ryan Ball, what, what's your area of expertise here? Cause uh, you know, when we bring people on the show, people are always like, well, what, who is this guy? You know, who is, who is this person who just came on and they think they're so fucking smart? Um, you don't have to say where you work, but like what, what's like your, I, you know, I am a, uh, a high school math teacher. So I spend all my oh, day, nerd. <laughs> spend all my day working with, uh, yeah. the, the high school youths. Wow. So I would uh, say um, I think I'm a little bit more well versed on, you know, pop culture than I was um, more so than I would prefer to be. There's a lot of wow. things that I don't want to know about that yeah. I do. Like TikTok <laughs> isms and stuff. Oh, my God. I cannot. I can't stand TikTok. So wow. you can. Right. Oh, so yeah. that's the thing. He's going to bring us into yeah. the, the gen next generation. Z demographic. Yeah, the, the gen. The, or, I mean, we're kind of like zillennials, right? Like, you know, 
but I don't of, know none of that those terms. Well, we're we're you're a, you're like a, a big wellspring of knowledge of of TikToks. I mean, can you just drop some knowledge now? Like, do you know anything that the kids like nowadays, just to kind of like help our SEO? Yeah, what's the new fidget spinner? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, so I mean, the the things that I know about TikTok aren't the good things about TikTok. Okay, um, is it like kind of right wing conspiracy theories? No, it's, or it's like... like the 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 like last year there's a big okay. uh, thing that went around devious yeah. licks. Devious so kids were licks? devious licks. I don't know what it was. Like did somebody licks? lick you? No, they oh, broke no. a lot of things in the school. Oh, just wait. to be devious. I don't. I don't know. Wait, so so Fine. there's no licking though. Like they're, no licking they're not licking things. Or? No, it, it it made no sense. See I don't how know. see how dense yeah. these guys are. See <laughs> when I'm like, yeah, there's this other thing. It's called this. But that's not really what it's about. And, and then for five minutes, they like ask follow up questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I didn't know you were a high school teacher, Ryan Ball. You probably have like the the mental fortitude. It's like the astronauts in this movie. Um, so so bless you for uh, for doing what you're doing, and uh, you know taking time to come on this show to help educate our youths even further. Um, I mean this this show probably has a wider reach. You're probably doing more good coming on here than what you're doing in the classroom. I'd argue. I, I like to think so. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess let's. Do you guys want to get into Geostorm? I can get into yeah. the synopsis. Let's just yeah. get this over with. Let's get Geostorm over with. Folks, there's going to be spoilers in this episode, um, but don't worry because this movie uh, sucks shit. So I'm just going <laughs> to hey, tell you hey. about this. <laughs> okay, Whoa, all right, dude. All right. Whoa, hey, that could come be... on, buddy. You have to give it C. If you have to give at least a C All right, synopsis. a C-rated synopsis. Straight down the middle. Nice and fair. So Geostorm uh, takes place kind of in our world where climate change is fucking shit up pretty bad. So a team of scientists from a bunch of countries, led by U.S. and China, uh, invested a ton of shit into space stuff and created a giant space satellite net with like a trillion weather missiles to shoot and nuke the fucking world into submission so that climate change isn't real anymore. Is that right? You guys are looking at me weird. The, okay. the, the word nuke is not quite right. But okay, yeah, I'm saying nuke you, you, is kind of continue. like a... Okay, yeah, they shoot weather missiles and the world's all better. And they name this machine the Dutch Boy. It's, it's a fable. It's about a boy who sticks his finger in a leaking dam and saves the Dutch community. They call it the Dutch Boy. And so it's everything super tight, all right? The weather's fixed. There's an international community and a sweet-ass ISS uh, up in space. But record scratch, er, shit goes sideways when the U.S. is supposed to hand over this technology to the rest of the world. Uh, People are thinking there's some funny business and that someone may have sabotaged this weather system. And places around the world are experiencing some wicked ass storms. People are fucking freezing in the middle of the desert. Uh, Tidal waves, fire tornadoes, you name it. And it's all building toward a one big global superstorm called a geostorm. The geostorm. Time to geostorm. 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 This it's movie geostorming says geostorming time. <laughs> I think out of every movie we've seen, I think this has the most title. I disagree. The drops, core. Right? It was the core. <laughs> I think. I don't think they've said the core directly though, right? Yeah, the core saying, is fucking up. You see the core? We got to get to the core. The core. This was like geostorm. Yeah, I but guess. geostorm had more like overall, you know, appearances. Right. Like it got its own on-screen. Oh, so many Geostorm times. Geostorm That's true. That's really yeah. true. They would say Geostorm and look directly at the camera and raise their eyebrows. It's going to be a wicked Geostorm. Um, so what's your guys' kind of overall impression before going into this movie? So, like, I want to get your, your kind of temperature before we saw this. Because we were around when this movie came out, right? 2017. We were around when pretty much all... Oh, I guess not one. Okay. Yeah, but, like, you know, we saying. were, like, mentally adults. You know, we were we were in the culture. What what, were you, what was your guys' perception? Well, this? I wrote it off when I when it first came out because I was Big like, mistake. that's obviously Gerard Butler's career is in the twilight zone, <laughs> and he needs to just make some checks. But you brought it up in the context of like we need another stinker. Mm. So maybe I thought it's is not going to be very good. Kind of akin to Moonfall. Like when I sat right. down on the couch with Julie, she was like. This better be better than <laughs> Moonfall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ryan, I, I had a similar perception of this this movie because um, when I saw it on on TV, like the the trailer, I was like, "What fucking year is it?" 
Because how long has it been since we've had a disaster movie? Like Moonfall excluded. This this type of movie would have came out in 2006, 2005 or six. And yeah. Would have felt comfortable in that arena. Consider that it was shelved. I looked up, it was shelved for a long time, like almost two years Yeah. after it was and, done. And that is some, some wild shit that it came out this late in the game. And I think for that reason, um, seeing updated like 2010 special effects in a disaster movie was a little bit of a treat. Mm-hmm. I think for me, um, I don't know about you guys, like some of the space scenes, like the ISS shit, kind of cool. I don't know. Like it looked kind of real uh, compared to like other shitters we've seen. I was like, fuck, like maybe we need more disaster movies. I don't know. Now you're, you're stretching a little bit into okay. conversation. Yeah. I want to hear Jason Ryan Ball's uh, first impressions. Please. Well, I I absolutely had no idea of what this movie was at all before watching it i'd mm. never even heard of it before oh. jace had told me hey man watch this movie around the podcast <laughs> <laughs> um my initial like inclination i guess when i saw the little um even when i pulled it up on the page and i just saw the paper for it or the background for it mm-hmm. i thought it was gonna be more like a um oh god what is it uh the day after tomorrow oh type yeah thing mm-hmm. so it, it was i had no idea what i was walking into and i don't think it was really anything even towards the realm that i was expecting it to be yeah did you think it was gonna be a b movie going in no no yeah okay okay because yeah, i was like if you've never heard of it geostorm <laughs> I, sounds like sharknado I, yeah i might have googled it going yeah. into it um right i had i had some ideas of it but i'd i'd never heard of it before i actually sat down and watched it mm-hmm. fair enough you went in cold it was a good idea uh jace what do you what, do you, what about you do, do, do you have any uh I completely missed this. So I wasn't, um, 2017 was, I think, predominantly me finishing up grad school. And I wasn't consuming much more than, like, I think watching Twitch, like watching people play games. Mm. Like, that was it. That was the only media. So I didn't see any type of, um, no commercials for Geostorm. I definitely wasn't watching TV that year because I think it was the first year I was alone in Seattle. Mm. In, did not have TV. And then, um, so I'm kind of surprised too because I feel like I've, I generally, for some reason, always see Gerard Butler's movies. I don't yeah. think I'm a Gerard Butler fan. <laughs> Sounds like, like, like a it. super fan. But like, I'm like, oh yeah, you name a Gerard Butler movie. It's surprisingly, it's like, hmm, oh no, I've seen it. Yeah, he's he's in a lot of these dang things, you know, and maybe we can do a, a GB's GB's GB season uh, with our boy. Gibby, 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 Gibby. We've seen a couple Gerard Butler movies in theaters. Gerard we saw Butler, Don Bland would be a good uh, season. Yeah, that's a great, <laughs> great actor. Um, on the topic of Gerard Rain of Butler. Fire. Rain of Fire, great fucking movie. You seen Rain of Fire, Ryan Ball? Uh, no, no, I have not. What? Uh, that that movie indulge. rules. Yeah, we'll do a re-review and then we'll have you on uh, after, <laughs> get, get your reaction to it. Yeah, man. Uh, it's got, it's got, um, you know, fucking what's his what's his name christian bale Matthew and uh, gerard mm-hmm. butler and it's a post-apocalyptic dragon movie we would do that this season if we could yeah. if we didn't do it already yeah, we need to do it uh <laughs> so what do you guys um i wanted to get your guys' opinion on this uh dad core this movie you guys think this one is dad core i don't mm. know you see i uh, over time my view mm. of dad core is becoming more restricted right because hmm. Sometimes I pop a movie into like our group chat that not for the podcast. And John was like, oh, that's dad core. I was like, there's what? a lot what of are you talking core. about. There's... And then uh, it turns out he hasn't even seen the fucking movie. Like you could tell from the cover. We're, yeah, we're talking about tell. the movie 13 lives. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's just dad core. Ryan, do you have a do you have an opinion on dad core? I don't or, even or what know. dad core means to you. No, I. It might help to get a uh, a okay. small definition. Would your dad like this movie? It's not your dad. Is it for dads? Yeah. Oh, is it for a? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, personally, my dad would shit out of this movie. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. That's established. Like a dad core movie, I would say that's good. Like Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Great movie. Black Hawk also Down. Also dad core. Black Hawk Down. A lot of war movies are dad dad core movies. Um, with uh, Sully, another dad core movie. Uh, just like movies, I think that are technical. Mostly a lot of Tom Hanks movies is what Tom they're saying. Tom Hanks, <laughs> well, yeah, he's a dad core hero. Uh, those are usually the good ones. Moonfall, I would say, is dad core too. Um, so like, I mean, this movie, we do have Gerard Butler playing a swashbuckling technical expert. 
who cuts through red tape and punches feds in the face and tells a senator to fuck off. I think that's pretty dad-like. Um, I don't know. There's there's just a lot of fucking dad shit in here. There's a there's well, the there's also like, like a dad plot line. Let's right, right. Yeah. yeah, he's he's fucking divorced. He's like, then that's my daughter down there. Punches a wimpy scientist in the face, and then um, there's a scene where the president's like, because I'm the goddamn president of the United States of America, and the music <laughs> so swells. Very dad core. And I feel like dads would start standing and like clapping yeah. and saluting. <laughs> they'd pause the movie to sing, say the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> Especially American dads. Okay, I need to talk about this. And this goes with the intro of the movie. So we can start kind of moving Mm -hmm. a little bit chronologically through this. Right, right. When the the title came up and the intro started playing and we had this little person, I don't know, a child of some sort, give us (laughs) an overview of what's happening. Mm -hmm. I was like, is this going to be like kind of like how Moonfall was kind of a sleeper, like kind of a alt-right movie that okay, we did yeah, not yeah. know what we were getting into. I thought, is this like an anti-climate change movie? So when I started watching this, I was like, oh no, this is a, this is a sleeper, this is a sleeping dart, and in, in a little mm. while I'm going to wake up and go to the Capitol on January 6th. And uh, <laughs> but, what, what did you guys think at the beginning? Like, I thought for sure this was going to be made by Republicans. Yeah, I think, uh, go ahead, Jace. I was, I was teetering on that. You know, and actually, I, I felt that um, beyond the messaging that the first five minutes was kind of the strongest. I know it's kind of a cliche, I think, for disaster movies to start with a child telling us about <laughs> what the like a little kid telling us where the world is and what the problems are. Right. But, um, you know, yeah, because because he was like an, when he goes to the hearing with the government, the senators, the, the bureaucrats on the throne, they're all like mean to him and they want to do everything by the book but he's the guy you call when you get things done right and that was very you know sort of like kind of a conservative mindset of like pulling yourself up by the bootstraps don't rely on the system drain the swamp sort of stuff right Mm. i mean i do think that the creators this movie do believe in climate change like i was at least a little surprised they're kind of doing the greta thunberg-esque intro it was cheesy as fuck but i at least with the tone i did at least you know think they're like okay climate change is happening it's gonna fuck up the world eventually we did create an artificial solution to fix the the world we fucked up um i do think that was legitimately there um maybe just the execution was just really hokey Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i mean what was your what was your reaction ryan ball like what do you think about kind of the premise and like how it was presented uh so similarly i thought the the opening did a i guess uh the best job as far as the movie did of like actually grounding it in um like real world type esque i guess Mm -hmm. um that opening like seen through the even the hearing made it that part of it seemed i guess very very plausible for like an actual disaster in the real world yeah um so I, i i bought in at that part i was like hey man at this point like this is where things could like actually happen but then the rest of the movie okay I, this is when this is when the this is i'm unfortunately i'm sorry yeah i have to intervene because i can't it's a courtroom I, scene I, is a <laughs> no i can't hide it anymore because okay. my next point goes along with everything i'm gonna talk about for the rest of the episode oh no and this is as far as i made it and it's clear to me what's yeah. going to happen because i thought he was gonna say the first five minutes did a disservice not like did the best job i loved this movie Oh, like, okay. me and Julie <laughs> were sitting on the couch, knee slapping, like <laughs> down in drinks, like watching this movie. I had an amazing time. Like, I don't. Oh, my like, God. No, like for, I thought yeah. you guys were going to come in here and have the same opinion as me. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Like, I thought you guys were serious. <laughs> <Are you> still <laughs> drunk? <laughs> I thought you guys were going to be like, yeah, what's your first impression? Oh, it was going to suck. But it was awesome. But like that's what I mean by my first impression. I thought it was going to be terrible. Yeah. Because we sat there, we're like, at least it's got to be better than Moonfall. Uh, and right, it right. fucking was. <laughs> huh. Well, right. I'm like so overjoyed that that you liked this movie. I'm happy um, for you. I. <laughs> you, you should probably get an MRI. Um, well, right. And like, isn't it kind of weird that like it's of all people? <laughs> yeah. Of right. The, was... <laughs> of the three of us, it's me. <laughs> That's great. I mean, what did you what did you uh, what did you like about it? I mean, there, oh, I think there man. were things to like. It was just like, like yeah. 
it wasn't a an end of the world movie. It wasn't like yeah, uh, that's what it. It was a fucking stupid political intrigue movie with like yeah. Like, oh, here's a little tiny spoonful of disaster movie. That's <laughs> not what we rate when we think about good movies. Like you know, I don't think an yeah. awesome movie just has it a bunch of Anne Hathaway in it because we're having Anne Hathaway season. I mean, I think uh, Ryan. I mean, t- to your point, I thought it was better than Moonfall. All right, Ryan Ball, have you seen Moonfall? I have not, no. It's on HBO. If you, do you have, you have HBO Do Max? not watch that <laughs> I, movie. I, I do, yeah. That's how I watch no, this one. No, no, don't. Don't. Okay, that movie, it's... I think we're referring to it as kind of the bottom of the barrel. It's probably one of the worst movies we've seen in a while. I think this one was not the worst movie I've seen. I just hate Patrick Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Wilson wasn't in this. Yeah, I think there is stuff to like. I mean... Uh, for one i was laughing a lot in the movie maybe not necessarily with it i was laughing a lot of stuff like at it um particularly like the airlock scene where that scientist got shot out in space they murdered some people in this movie (laughs) i rewinded that three times (laughs) and the body just like limply like flying around yeah and i like that about like in moonfall that would have taken five fucking minutes and there would have been a, like, you would have met his family. Yeah. Like, this movie was just like, <laughs> let's go. Like, this is what's happening. Let's figure the problem out. And we didn't have to have all these, like, side quests and stuff before the main characters realized that what was going on was important. The The main characters were capable. And they said, hey, this thing is suspicious, this thing is suspicious, and this thing is suspicious. We should start mm-hmm. with the presumption that they're connected. I do right. not like movies where, like, your main fucking job is to figure out what's going on. And you're like, well, everything must be a coincidence. Like, it's really nice to see, like, people figure out and solve complex problems, not, like, stumble into them miraculously. And I felt like this movie did a good job of surprising me and being like, yeah, we're going to really get to the bottom of this. Like, what's going on? We're going to, like, figure out how these satellites are malfunctioning. And normally, like, in a movie like Moonfall, they'd be like, oh, it's... it's, it's 10,000 years ago, there was an AI, and he <laughs> made the moon. And in this, I don't know, I felt like there were stakes all the time. I just liked it. I, just, I thought the screenplay was clever. I didn't think the execution was all that great. Acting a little subpar, but like I thought a the little. screenplay was really nice. <laughs> yeah, do you, I mean, I want to hear what you guys think um, about like the turn in this movie that Ryan was talking about. Like, the, you know there is a little bit where it, where it turns into a political intrigue like you guys were talking about where it's like a big conspiracy where the president is trying to like orchestrate this global attack to take down the enemies um, but but then it kind of becomes more complicated than that tinker taylor uh, you... soldier space station yeah <laughs> uh you know ryan ball do you have a, do you have like a, a a reaction to that or like were you just like whatever like <laughs> well i mean i the more i was watching it the more i was like man i i hate that I'm American because I feel like this is just such a plausible response to if this scenario was to happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, you know, we, we can't lose control. So we're going to do the world be damned. We'll kill everyone just to make sure that we have control. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know, it is a plausible like scenario of American imperialism just it, holding the, this over the, the world. The thing <laughs> is, though, it entirely is. It doesn't make sense that that is the case because mm-hmm. the entire premise was that the entirety of the world put their resources into building these things. And right. under no circumstance, like would the UN give the entirety of its resources to building these rockets and then be like, you know, America, you just, you just, you just take control of the whole station. You've got it for three years. So it's like, and also it was like, it was spearheaded at the beginning, spearheaded by China and the U S mm-hmm. supplied resources by everybody. But then all of a sudden it's just like, well, guys, we can't tell anybody there was a disaster. It's an election year. Right. I mean, I could believe that the U.S. finagled itself into just gaining full control just by That's politicking. That's we do it, baby. It's like, we fucking do that. And we had our lead scientist was an American. You know, that dude knows everything about this dang thing. Yeah, kind of counter to Jason's point. Well, he got point. kicked out in the start of the movie, though. <laughs> well, right. But kind of counter to Jason's point is I thought it was refreshing how international this was. Yeah. Like you had a German scientist, you had a French dude who we thought was the one of the baddies. We had an Iranian guy who we thought was one of the baddies, but like the bad dude is another American and another mm-hmm. American. Like it was, yeah, I it thought was that all. was cool because usually yeah. like the bad guy's Russia. Well, right, that's right. not Fair. what my my point isn't that there isn't 
there is obviously the people and the workers on these projects, much like any other research or co-development project or like the current International Space Station is top minds from all around the world. But the only person that was allowed to make shot calls technically in this movie was the president of the United States of America. Oh, okay. I see. And that just really would not, I, I don't see that happening in an oversight committee, even if we start having geostorms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. did. I did like that in that beginning scene where they were kind of in this front of the Senate committee about they're talking about the ethics of switching on Dutch boy without the consent of the UN or the rest of the world where the U.S. turned this machine on, and Gerard Butler was like, you're welcome, I fucking saved all of you. But they were like, did you have the right to control the weather of the world like that? Um, you know, obviously it can't be argued that, like, he, he didn't save anybody, but, like, um, I do think that would be a real convo we would have uh, of being like, should we just do that one day? And, you know, thank goodness it worked, but, like, what if it didn't? Like, what if it just, like, completely destroyed the world? Yeah, that kind of leads into what I'm... Our end scene is them sitting, fishing on a dock, and everyone being happy that Gerard Butler's character came back alive, yeah. even though millions of people died. <laughs> and also, what is the rest of the world going to do when they were like, um, your super Christian uh, crazy vice president wanted to take over and kill everybody? And yeah. I, d- I, don't think, I don't think it would be three dudes, or two dudes and one guy's daughter fishing on a dock. I think it'd be like, <laughs> uh... Everybody's gunning for you now, America. Yeah. Like, so wait, so thing? wait. So what you're saying is Geostorm 2? Yeah. Geostorm 2. There should probably the be. The Hague. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the U.S. effectively attacked every fucking country, right? Like, that was the equivalent of, like, nuking multiple cities. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then they, even if they said it was an accident, like, the U.S. team's still, like, culpable, right? Like, what's the, like, you think after hong kong just got like completely exploded with fire tornadoes they're like oh it's all good guys no worries no no that guy was an asshole you're right <laughs> we get it i also like what i wanted to kind of note the act i want to talk about like the acting in this movie you know we have jim sturgis who i haven't seen in like fucking 15 years and anything well uh, neither has his barber so keep that fun. going yeah. <laughs> jim sturgis's hair is so fucking bad in this movie like you know jace when you sent that text about <laughs> someone needs to like fire his hairdresser i was it was like distractingly bad i like how- sympathize with him a little bit because i have the same sort of thing where my hair goes like way down the back of my neck and then starts like coming straight out but i get my hair cut like my barber like accounts for that and he's had cuts all hair. of it off like he, he doesn't my barber doesn't just like shave all the hair down to the same length and then let that stuff grow out like the hair on the top of my head is longer than the hair on the bottom of my head. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think he, they just somehow cut it so he looks like he's perpetually balding, even though he's not. It ruined my immersion. It did, too. I, I, I understand like, you can have you can have it, whatever haircut you want, but if you're sitting in a room with the president, the vice president, and 40 other cabinet members, you probably, besides wearing a suit, are, like, well well kept. And, like, I've seen a picture of him with long hair where he looks really good. He yeah. looks really good with, like, a nice slicked back. I was like, I was like, damn. And then it's a picture of him from during the time of this movie. And I'm like, <laughs> he, he definitely makes enough money in his job in the movie to afford a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. I make enough to afford a haircut. Yeah. He can do it. Right. <laughs> and even also, we, like, we learned during the pandemic, too, that, like, you can just cut your own hair. <laughs> and it can yeah, look good. Like, that was a hard year for big hair. Um, also, I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed this watching with Gerard Butler um, and, and also Jim Sturgis, like their accents kept slipping throughout this movie, like Gerard Butler's thick, like Scottish accent and Jim Sturgis is like, there was a scene where they're both talking to each other and both both of them are just constantly slipping into the British territory. And I, it seemed like it was like two secret agents trying to like pretend that they're both American. And he's like, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, <excuse me. laughs> or like the other guy's like oh i'm trying and like they didn't take another take and i was like what the fuck guys <laughs> did you guys notice that in the movie no surprisingly um accents and the lack of ability to control them is not something yeah. i really pick up on yeah i didn't movies. hear a lot of the dialogue i was laughing and chewing popcorn <laughs> too loudly yeah i mean that's probably why you like this movie so much uh because <laughs> gerard butler in this movie too like i don't know if you guys saw the imdb uh, trivia about it apparently a bunch of crew members and like extras were talking about how he didn't have any of his lines memorized for this movie like he didn't seem to like have if, them okay prepared. 
<laughs> if you're a Gerard Butler and you're showing yeah. up to a Geostorm, you don't have to memorize your lines. You're the only thing selling this puppy, dude. What are they going like, to do, fucking fire you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, like, uh, eventually Bruce Willis got to the point where he, I mean, let's not make fun of his condition at all. That's not what I'm right, saying. Right. But like, he got to a point where they had to put like an earpiece in and feed him lines as he mm. was supposed to say them. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, like fun it's part of the movie like if you're the star you don't have to do a lot of overtime reading your lines i guess so i just i think it was indicative of the fact that like a lot of this movie was phoned in <laughs> it just really seemed like it for me uh it's it, of this acting i mean do you guys have like a reaction i mean ryan ball like did you have like a reaction to like the the acting in this movie or like again since i um yeah. wasn't going into it with i would say um super high hopes especially not knowing a whole lot about it yeah I tried not to go in there and be too critical about it. Probably I mean, for I the just, best. Like, <laughs> I also just wanted to, you know, enjoy seeing Gerard Butler on a screen. Yeah. Good looking dude. Yeah. Exact opposite for me. <laughs> exact opposite for me. I the fucking worst, hate this guy. The, <laughs> I fucking, well, I liked, I won and I hate this. I hope he never listens to it. This is going to be my Ben Affleck thing. But actually, oh, I don't no. even give a shit because Jim Sturr just kind of looks like a weenie baby. <laughs> <laughs> the miss there all of the scenes between two people are mis like misacted they're at completely opposite levels where gerard butler would be like and he'd have this stoic like face on and he'd be doing this smoldering like thing and then jim sturgis would be like and then gerard butler would just be like or the president and like every every scene was literally jim sturgis being directed to act so poorly i feel like in front of the camera it looks like i felt like i don't know who jim sturgis is i thought right. he was maybe a classically trained stage actor Across and they the didn't universe. tell him they didn't say hey by the way you're on a camera you know things can be really subtle we can pick up on your movements it was like he was ready to be in a shakespearean play so he had to be on the screen going oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And I hated it. And it killed me. And all of my points are talking crap about Jim Sturgis and how every <laughs> single time that he talked, he sounded like he was out of breath. Like it was, there's, there's something coming up. And then I think, I, um, like one thing that really got to me was when they were having a satellite communications conversation over what would yeah. essentially be a telephone and I think this comes back to Ryan talking about actors having to act for a, a visual effect that right, they can't right. see. He's whispering over the satellite communication to his brother that it's being transmitted to. He's like, <laughs> hey, I know we're on the phone, but I've got to keep this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, Jim Stewart just really fires me up. <laughs> That sentence has never been uttered before. <laughs> I, Jim Sturgis just really, and then blank, just anything after that. <laughs> Do people have opinions about this guy? He was great in Twenty One. I thought, yeah, I, I liked him good. in Twenty One. He was pretty, pretty good. You ever seen Twenty One, Ryan Ball? Uh is that the which one's that? Card That's counter. like a blackjack movie with Kevin Spacey and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, pretty, it's, it's a fun movie, right? It's, it's okay. Jim Sturgis season. Yes. Uh, Jim Sturgis, I think in this one, uh, he played the epitome of like uh, a young brother. Yeah. Right. But like he's an adult now and he shouldn't have those same, you know, like young behaviors. But he's just perpetually a, a, a young brother throughout the entire movie. That was right. literally part of his character. Like that, that know, was discussed like, I, on camera. You but have like to listen to me. He's he's like in the fucking like cabinet meetings and he's still acting like a fucking <laughs> yeah but like that a was toddler like, to the president yeah you're yeah. getting it yes yes maybe guys, this movie yes. is more genius than we think you're understanding now <laughs> i wish you all would have seen this movie through my eyes oh man i thought i thought this was going to be a totally different episode um also like there's a lot of really good just i feel like there's a lot of really good lines in this movie like we can't get the kill codes the president is the kill codes it's like an <laughs> what's AI, wrong with that it's like an AI watched like 3000 hours of like disaster movies or 80s action films and just like compiled by numbers. Yeah. Cuz it just it feels like you can predict every line before it's said. Yes. And 
every time Amber walked by, <laughs> she was like, this is the dumbest fucking movie I've ever seen. <laughs> That's so crazy like, because like uh, when I was watching it, uh, I, my, my notes are positive things like, oh, that's a clever reveal. I like the screenplay. 24 minutes oh, in, no. this movie rocks. Like, things like that. And I like that they copied the ice running away scene from the day after tomorrow. That was really yes. original. <laughs> also, that ice beam, like, wouldn't there be, like, an intermediate temperature? Yes. Between frozen, frozen solid and, like, completely fine? <laughs> yeah. So, spoilers, guys. I'm not going to give this movie a 10. It's because <laughs> of the unrealistic physics. Right, right. I mean, there's there's some there's some some weird stuff at play here too, and like also the motives I feel are kind of off. Like you know that that one scientist guy from Umbrella Academy, Duncan Taylor. Yeah, he, he they were like he was like you know how much our lowly scientists get paid. Yeah, that times a thousand, and he's like, don't you want to see the world burn? And I was like, what? <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about? Well, also like, Gerard Butler had like a really good point. Like if you destroy the world, yeah. there won't be anywhere to spend the money. We'll be saving all the best bits. Yeah, it's like the world will be fucking defunct if you destroy most of it still. <laughs> like, it's not going to be the same world. And then, you know, and then Amber saw that scene where he's like, all the millions will die. And one of them's my daughter. And he like charges the guy with the gun. And then she was like, I can't watch. She's like, I got fucking chills. That was fine. I like right that movie. Now. Uh, I like that scene. Yeah. That was fine. Yes, I know you like the movie, that was, that Ryan. Was, that was like a I'm personal, just telling you what he, I... He was interjecting his personal character into the broader conflict. Yeah, it's There's a fucking, a fucking alternate dimension where we watched this one week earlier because Michael was going to be on here, and Ryan was like, this was the shittiest fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. I want to be in that dimension. <laughs> Ryan got his new, like, Dr. Scholl's gel inserts that day. Whoa. <laughs> He's like... Um, <laughs> He sees this movie. <laughs> Where was this for Sahara, you piece of crap? <laughs> this is Ryan Sahara. No, this is Ryan Sahara. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah. reframes it mentally for me. I mean, yeah. Dracula we've also had Sahara. a few of my Saharas. Like, I like Matrix 4. Yeah, I still... I still. You ever see Matrix 4, Ryan Ball? Is it? I, I didn't watch the new one yet, no. Uh, the third one kind of... It's also on HBO. So. You don't need to the watch the third one. The third one lost me. And then um, I I saw the fourth one came out and I just after the third one didn't have any. I'd say give it a shot. Desire. Go in with a good go, <laughs> no, go in with a, a good mood movie. and just be like I'm getting more Matrix content and yeah yeah. It's I thought the best it was worse than made. the third one. I just okay. All right, that's all right. We did. We you just listened to our Matrix episode, you guys. You can watch. You can fucking listen. That's to two hours long. We talked about the Matrix all the goddamn night. Um, do you want, do we want to break down like? <laughs> Yes. The, the the end scene, right? So like the overall thing is that the Secretary of State is this fucking nut job mm -hmm. who thinks he wants he wants the US to be number one again. You you screw up all the other countries, you keep the Dutch boy, and we're on top, baby, right? Yeah, you got it. And then he's like, I get to be the next president now, pulls out RPG and shoots it at <laughs> you know, at the good guys. And then there's a point where like okay he's standing in the middle of like this field <laughs> on like right by a highway <laughs> and he shoots the rpg at the car you think the good guys are in right and then the car explodes and he's like i got him i'm president now and then <laughs> just somebody gets like fucking pistol whipped from behind <laughs> it's like we got you in and the then middle the of a lightning storm <laughs> Like there's where, yeah, you're where did they come it. from? See, like you're getting it, dude. There's there like were they underground? <laughs> like they 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 like teleported MacGruber style behind him. <laughs> like there was there was no way they could have hid and got around him. And then his bodyguards like laying dead like ten feet away too. <laughs> <laughs> like like what the fuck was that? I like, loved it so much. When the secret was... agent hit a J turn and driving a Prius and then murdered that dude. Yeah. It's just like, oh. Uh, put some respect on her name. That's a Jane Wick we're talking about. <laughs> and the president just in the background, just marry her. Yeah. Marry no, I her liked... kid. No, okay. Let's be real clear. That was not the most realistic, you know, scene ever. I liked the spirit of it. I thought it didn't make sense at the end how, like, the president was there for the actual combat, but then the Secret Service vehicles were, like, just chilling in the shadows. And when she was like, yeah, yeah book on boys, then they all, like, <laughs> showed up. Uh, that was really stupid, too. I liked it. I thought it was fun. 
It's like, yeah, we get we get like a villain speech. Mm-hmm. Did you also villain- did you like it because you didn't get to watch it because you had a seizure because of the epileptic light flashing? <laughs> yeah, how did this movie You're actually like, end? <laughs> During also, that scene, yeah. I thought Michael Bay was the director of the movie. Yeah. yeah the lightning it, storm it was, with everything it was blowing a, there was a, up. There's right. some Bayham in there, yeah. There was some Emmerichisms and some Bayham there. We just like explosions, things shattering and stuff. Yeah, I mean, do we have like a better, like, do we have like a better solution than what they came up with in this movie? I liked you know? the, when they had one malfunctioning mm-hmm. thing. Well, they actually had a fuck ton and they decided right. to do it once. They had one malfunction over Rio, and they sent the replacement satellite to knock oh, yeah. it out. That was cool. Yeah, that's a good I idea. Think... Just do that with all the ones that are fucking up. Why don't you do? Why don't you like take whatever is shooting a hot ray at a place, and then a cold ray at the place, and then just make them aim at each other to undo whatever happened to that place. <laughs> that's make, not like, how the, the. That's obviously not of how of the... Dutch Boy worked. Well, they're, each satellite was shooting a different fucking ray, like a yes. tornado ray, an earthquake ray. But they and, were, but they were over the area that needed that type of ray. Yeah, well, just turn it like in a different direction and shoot it. At That's a different why the part of hot the places were getting cold. Okay. Uh, no, there were thousands of the same type of satellite. So yeah, I think there were there many were hot more satellites food. over. Have you ever been on Google Maps? There's all the world. So many places. Yeah. How many? How much? Uh, how much dang money you think this thing cost? It's like. 900 quadrillion dollars there was a the satellite actual, like, the actual dutch boy every <laughs> like every 100 miles there was a satellite i think if anything it shows you that money is a construct and that like if you actually just want to put all of our precious metals in space you could do so you know that's right the money scarcity is a capitalist construct yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to know you want to talk about money yeah talk a little bit about money yeah jace yeah, do me. your segment this movie cost 120 million dollars to make right okay and i just want to point out that directed by written by and produced by dean devlin this is his first movie production companies electric entertainment owned by dean devlin so this man made a lot of i, I this movie probably act you know it cost 120 million dollars <laughs> to make and i'm gonna guess he siphoned off 70 million 80 80 90 million of it <laughs> right into his pocket yeah yeah this made Dean so much dang money. That's fucking crazy. That's what I'm talking about. We need to get Lobster Hurricane going. Yeah. yeah. This well, we don't have like... a VFX company. Because you know what he did? He was like, here's $60 million to do the VFX. And he was like, okay, we've got a whole team on it. He paid one high schooler to do all yeah. the effects. Like where they animated that one scene with the car, I guess. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Some of it was good. Some of it was like really bad. Like... I did the VFX for astronaut faces. I like the Hong Kong scene. Let's be real clear. I like the space. The space did look pretty cool. Space was cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys have a favorite disaster in the movie? There were the like whole thing, kind of hot cold wave. I think I like cold wave. Um, I also, I mean, this maybe wasn't a disaster, but it was the same vein. Like when the guys, when Gerard Butler's RCS thrusters started going crazy, and he just started ragdolling and just smashing into solar panels, and his suit was totally fine. The most amazing spacesuit ever made. Just going through broken glass. And I thought that scene was really funny. <laughs> Every During space that scene, I, I, go ahead. I had the thought of, um, you know, I mean, granted, the entire space station was exploding. But like, yeah, where's all this debris going? Yeah, space. they don't do well with that at all. Because one of the greatest threats to mankind is how much debris we're putting up in low Earth orbit, middle Earth orbit, in geo. Because a single fucking bolt traveling around the earth at thousands of miles an hour would have mm-hmm. punctured Gerard Butler's chest and ended this movie 50 minutes in. Well, good thing there's it's, not just a single bolt up there, Jace. There yeah, billions. It's, <laughs> it's space. Space is infinitely big. Just push it all a little farther away. Actually, the answer is the opposite. Push it in? Yeah. Closer to earth? Because then it'll get just burn up in the atmosphere. No, oh, the atmosphere is not that hot. Um... I, okay, I have the box office mojo up here. Um, Want to play the box office game and just try to see where this thing landed? Well, Jace just told... Oh, oh, I see. Okay, yeah. with what else yeah, came Jace out? Jace told us the money. I have All no right. idea when this came out or... This came out in the year 2017, okay? What month? This uh, October 10th, 2017. This debuted at number two in the box office. Not a terrible showing, but not that great for like a marquee act like this. 
Um, it was beat out by a certain sequel. It is a holiday themed sequel debuting at number one that weekend. Um, Halloween. You're close. You're very close. This is a movie that stars a very prominent comedian who plays a lot of different roles in these movies. Adam Sandler. Hubie Halloween. Not Adam Sandler. Norbit. Not Norbit. There hasn't been a Norbit sequel. Okay. Um, it's a certain Tyler Perry movie. What? Wow. Gone Girl. Medea's it's Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's Boo to a Medea Halloween. Debuted at number one that weekend, beating what? out Geostorm. Geostorm um, got beat by a Medea Halloween sequel? <laughs> wow. That's three qualifiers. And then uh, Geostorm did beat out another movie, a horror movie. Um, this this could have been our uh, a holiday horror movie as well. I don't think you guys are going to guess this one. This Hold this on. is like... What, what, okay. Give me another deed. It's... It, um, the, the name starts with happy. Happy Death Day? Yeah, it's Happy Death Day. You've seen Happy Death Day? No, I just know a lot about horror movies. Um, and then Blade Runner 2049 was like number yeah. five. Man, mm. Yeah. Man, didn't do that good that week. Um, do we want to get into our disastometers? Do you guys have other points you want um, to point out about this movie? please. Apocalometer. Ryan, what do you want to call it today? I do like apocalometer. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Hmm. Apocalometer. And of Wait, course. What's the other one? Dis- disastometer. I might have to go with disastometer nope. th- for this one, just because. <laughs> it's apocalyptic. Just because. Just because this one. Yeah. I feel like apocalypse is more like well, natural. That should factor into the rating. Not. Therefore, you go low. Okay. We don't just okay. pick a, whatever freaking scale we get a high number okay. on. Okay. Ryan Ball's a guest. But no, you guys say this shit every week. <laughs> We'll do it. Okay, we'll do apocalometer if someone cares that much. Uh, and and Ryan, Ryan Ball, <laughs> you my might season. be you might be familiar with the format of this show. We have a separate meter from the movie meter that judges, um, you know, how well does it fit the theme of the movie? How like disaster? How apocalypse was this movie? Who do we have starting off it's usually me. this season? Was it was it okay? And uh, what do you think? Yeah, so my apocalometer, I think, is going to be different from my movie meter. <laughs> Uh, yeah. maybe not in the way that I would have expected going in. I think this lost points because it wasn't like our guest so eloquently said, it was not really like a true world ending scenario. Even if like the worst case happened, the geostorm would have left the U S mostly untouched. So the, like that. Okay. So it can't really get above a five ish, like five ish is the maximum, but let's look at the, let's look at the scoreboard here. Uh, the U.S. is responsible. I'm, I'm, t- I'm stealing your thunder, both of you, because okay. I'm, I'm advocating for this movie. <laughs> we have dead birds. You see those icebergs fall out of the sky in that's Rio. True. Mm-hmm. Um, it made Julie cry. So that's that's a plus. That's because, on your meter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a plus because about half the time of these disaster movies, she, she'd be crying. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I do too. And uh, we had a countdown. Did this movie make you cry, right? Geo Storm make we, you cry. We, we had a countdown. Uh, yeah, that's like four big things okay. yeah. that, that we're looking for. Um, mm-hmm. Now, here's my topic for discussion. Could the GBGBs survive? Mm. I think, obviously, I think going under an underpass was the president's solution. And that's very obvious to me. It worked pretty good for that place, right? Because their problem was lightning. Yeah. An underpass stops lightning pretty good. Yeah. But tornado, a fire tornado? Yeah. Run away. Run away is pretty good. I think I'd get the heck out of Dodge pretty fast. Let's go to Nebraska. We. (sighs) Wouldn't you need to think of like what the natural disaster would be in this region and like how they would combat it to determine if we would survive? I guess, but it seemed kind of random. Like there was huge hailstones in Tokyo. That one was and, yes. The other well, ones at least seemed like it wasn't. I opposites. mean, it, it was obviously shown in the movie to be a programmed attack. So right. they were utilizing specific satellites to attack certain locations, and it, it wasn't done in Florida until it, the storm was still going on until they did the reset, right? Which happens, you know, five minutes after they punched that dude in the face. I think. Uh... I think we could survive. We'd all we'd be four for four. Now, I'm not what a about systems engineer? I can't restart this? it. <laughs> if so tasked, yeah, could we prevent could we fix this? Oh mm. yeah, definitely. I think definitely. It's obviously that dude. It was really obvious. It was Ed Harris and the skinny programmer dude. <laughs> they look evil as shit in this movie. Yeah, you can fucking tell it's them. And then I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty good at solving computer stuff. 
Like I can just kind of like, like I was saying, like also, did you turn it on and off again? <laughs> Wait, that was the solution. It's right? literally the solution. It was. It was just a hard reboot. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think this passes. I think I'm gonna give it a six on the disaster meter, and it loses those four points for, you know, not being the actual end of the world. All right, a six. That's not bad. Did you guys see the map? Speaking of like of all the disasters in this movie. I like, took a picture and I yeah. I just didn't send it to you because I didn't want to burn content <laughs> and now I've forgotten about it. Pacific Northwest was in the clear, dude. Okay, the okay, entire yeah. Puget Sound Can was you send beautiful. It? Can you send it? Because I want to check. I want to yeah. check me. Because wasn't there was parts of America in there, wasn't there? That were there were parts of America that were red and most of Middle America, like the Midwest and the Pacific Northwest, was blue. In the there's mostly the, like the southeastern. Yes, they were just Area. like, we attacked all our enemies, including Florida. <laughs> Hard reboot. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead and send that map. Because, I mean, there's also parts of Canada that just got, like, annihilated. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, even Give even the second. most. I mean, is Canada our, our adversary? I don't think so. I think we like I Canada. I think if you're cool a hat. fucking psychopath. <laughs> Last I checked, we liked Canada. If you're a trucker, dude, they're enemy yeah. number one. Why is this dude fucking Secretary of State, man? Like, that's president appointed. Yeah, also, the Secretary of State does not become president if the president gets assassinated. And He said line of succession. Yeah, but he said the everybody... Speaker of the House and the Senate pro tempore don't go to the DNC. But then they didn't they say that at the DNC? Because he was like, they're all there. And like they said on the stage, it was like in a banner. They were like, and then we have this, we have the fucking pro tempore, and then we have the VP here. Oh, really? And they're all speaking. It was like oh. I remember yeah, thinking I, the I same think they, thing. I think I saw that banner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was like, that's was usually like, not the lineup. It's not Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna be psyched. We got this old fucking guy called the pro tempore up in here. He's the oldest motherfucker in Congress. It's like the exact reason why they don't allow everyone to yeah, literally, be in the same that's, place. That's the <laughs> exact that reason. The rule, yeah. In case it's a like geostorm if, happens. In case a geostorm. Jace, did you send that thing? Yes. Okay. So holy shit, that's like fucking half the goddamn world. I think it might be just places that are really susceptible to climate change too. Like, you know, you don't just bomb population centers; you bomb places that are geostorm susceptible like the midwest already gets that shit so why would we do it <laughs> well, they're fucked I, anyways i mean uh well scenario 19 1920 uh like you oh, said save the good places the goal is to kill a bunch of people and then they're already in control of dutch boys so then they just stop killing people eventually okay. and then they're like well, well there are 12 million oh, of us poor left iceland Man, europe is, is completely rad. gone yeah so uh, I'm seeing a little dark streak in central New York. Is, isn't that that might the that might be me? <laughs> L.A. is good, baby. I think we're all, I think we're all in the clear. Hawaii is completely underwater. Um, I think Michael is in trouble here. Um, I think we're I think we, we'd go okay here in, in Geostorm if we stayed in the same position. But if we were in space, I'd probably have a panic attack and probably vacuum everybody out of the the ISS. Now you would have a panic attack if we were in space, no matter what. Yeah, I think so, and. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah so as far as my disastometer goes ryan um y you named some of my check marks here because the pigeons falling from the sky and shattering like meat cubes my jaw dropped that's a big check uh u.s created and solved it a check -a and then uh, one of us has to stay behind to blow the place up that's another check even though uh, gerard butler did kind of make it out it was it was a pretty much a, a pretty good apocalypse scenario i think as far as like overall kills i think it killed like a lot of people okay you know you can say like moonfall and they say like a couple thousand people died even though i think that's bullshit uh you know 12 monkeys it was like five billion people i think here at least a couple hundred thousand right like there was big ass like earthquakes and shit and frozen tidal waves mm -hmm. um i think only that one lady in brazil survived after outrunning the ice laser <laughs> um so this is going to be a little high but it's not the end of the world it might be the end of the world as we know it uh, but it's not quite there. I'm going to give it, I think, a seven. It is a global scenario. I think it would have fucked some shit up pretty bad. And I feel like, honestly, it would have fucked the world up more than, like, the evil people were expecting. I think they thought it was all going to be, like, fine afterwards and we can recover. I don't know if the world could recover from that and actually rebuild in a significant way. So seven, I think, is, is safe for this. Uh, Jace, go. Ryan Ball, right? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. Ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, granted, I you know only knew some of what I was going to be rating before I went into it. <laughs> um, thinking back on the d disaster apocalypse. 
alpaca alpacalometer. Alpacalometer. Yeah. Alpacalometer. Um, whatever we're referring to it as. I couldn't get over uh, during the entire movie, like going into it, thinking it was going to be a doomsday movie, getting over like the the political side of it because it just carried so much of the story forward. So my my rating is probably a little bit lower uh, just because of that. I couldn't I was expecting more like, you know, the day after tomorrow where everything was just shit the entire time as far as climate goes. Um, so I think I'm, I'm sitting at like a five. A it had five, a lot of yeah. great things that the nice trope of the ice wave coming in, freezing everyone, watching the birds frozen from the sky. That was great. The the plane that the Brazilian happened to just narrowly outrun that crashed between all the buildings. That was cool. <laughs> it's a cool shot. But I just I couldn't get over the the more political drama side of it as far as the apocalypse side goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Jace, what do you think about uh, about the apocalometer? Shamelessly stolen from the top comment on a Reddit thread. Too much geo, not enough storm. <laughs> like the, you know, it does hit all of the elements that we talk about of like the U.S. being at fault, then the U.S. trying to solve the problem, getting halfway through the movie, and then the villain turns out to be somebody who you thought was a good guy, the being the vice president. You know, it really hits all those things. And I think like raw numerically, I would give it a seven. Uh, but because I think the first hour and 20 minutes of the movie are not disaster movie and they're like, it is political intrigue. I just, I'm going to cut it down to a four. I'm going to divide mm -hmm. it in two. Um, I don't think you got really the disaster movie elements. I think they were there and they were like sprinkled. You don't get it until the last... 40 minutes and that's a lot for of political intrigue to have for a nearly two-hour movie and mind you i'm gonna give it a point because like every other movie in this season it has been near the 120 minute mark yeah <laughs> pretty I insane like, i thought it was like 90 something i think it's in the, the hundreds. runtime yeah the runtime for this what? movie hour 49 40. yeah hour 49 oh okay well it flew by to me 109 <laughs> um I do think it was cool. It just like as far as the dis disasterometer thing, I thought um, maybe it's more of a movie rating. I think they took an approach for attempting to create something that might have been somewhat scientific and then kind of throwing it out the window halfway through the movie. And that can be OK. But uh, seeing a heat beam generated by a satellite melting and exploding things. It's pretty cool. While sick. Okay. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I would say I'd probably give it a seven or eight okay. normally, and I'm just giving, I'm cutting it down for my actual numerical value because right. of the too much geo. Too much geo, not enough storm. All so right, it's a take what? note for it's the four. reboot. It's a four. So I, yeah. Well, I'll Maybe switch. Twenty years from now, you I'll know? switch gears yeah. into the movie review, the movie meter, and this is gonna, this is gonna surprise y'all. And you know, <laughs> uh, you have pointed out some valid criticisms. Not only in the movie, but also with my line of reasoning, and uh, I, I want to get this out. I don't get it out of the way. I'm shooting for like a seven or an eight here. Folks. Oh my god, hey. Ryan! <laughs> and oh no. me being like, I've only rated like five movies in the history of the podcast, like an eight or above. I think, uh, I think it's serious contention. The the parts I liked was that it wasn't a disaster movie. Like I went in expecting a Roland Emmerich piece of crap, and instead I got like a movie I would watch again. And I would like, <laughs> okay, maybe not now knowing how you feel, but I would recommend this to a lot of people <laughs> if oh, I had no. I had this conversation tonight. <laughs> I just I, and Julie was with me yeah. the whole time. It's not like I liked it and she hated it like in Twelve Monkeys. So mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad. I think you guys have, you know, eventually awoken me to the possibility that it's okay to enjoy a bad movie. Whereas I used to try to be so critical and analytical and my enjoyment would derive from the criticisms or lack thereof that I found in the movie. And like with this movie, oh, she finds the self-driving taxi. Oh, that's going to be empty. I'm like, oh. And then they pop out and they pistol whip the Secretary of State in the back of the head. And the president's like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, <laughs> oh, man, that was cool. 
I don't know why you guys did not think that was cool. <laughs> and the space station was so awesome. Like Gerard Butler is up there, like you know, putting dots together and snapping necks. Oh uh, man, I I don't know. Like I'm gonna give it an I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm just gonna do it just to be like a little bit contrarian. I'm just gonna I'm mm-hmm. just gonna err on the side of like yeah. kind of making a headline. I I, I think this <laughs> I really did have a good time. That's less objective, you know, more subjective because there were some big blunders I thought from like a set design standpoint, like. When the girl is saying, oh, these are sun tracking solar panels and the sun is the, in the complete opposite direction. Like funny things like that, if anything, made me like a little bit more endeared to the movie. Well, I'm glad we got you on a hot mic saying that you love Geostorm, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, you're the you're, you're the biggest advocate for this movie. A 17 percent of Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> holding the line <laughs> against the deluge. Uh, well, I'm happy you like it, too. You know, it, it wouldn't be the same if it's just four of us shitting on this movie. Um, so maybe it's good to have to have someone, you know, batting, batting in its corner here. Um, because, I mean, honestly, t- to your point, Ryan, I actually, I like this movie a lot, a lot better than I thought I would. I was expecting something along the lines of, of Moonfall. And honestly, with a lot of these movies we've seen, like disaster movies, they can feel like a bloated three-hour slog. Uh, but this movie actually did a pretty good job with, like, editing and the length. Um, you know, we, we mentioned it was like 109 minutes. Normally this thing would be like 30 to 45 minutes longer. And I think it, it benefited from that. Um, it, I definitely don't think it was good, but I was never actually like bored in this movie. Um, I found myself laughing a lot at the movie and was still somewhat interested in what was happening, which is a lot more than I could say from some of these other shitters that, um, that we've seen. Like the worst thing for me is when a movie is bad and is boring on top of that, that is just like fucking excruciating (laughs) for me. So just the fact that this movie didn't, um, check those boxes was like a big plus. There were aspects of this movie, like when we, when we get into the intrigue point and it keeps unraveling and they keep just saying all this wild stuff, it reminded me of some of these like eighties to nineties, uh, political intrigue movies, which aren't really my bag. I usually like political intrigue, but it it seemed like it, this would be something in like a Bruce Willis movie, which isn't really my type of thing. Uh, especially if, since it felt like I was getting like switched out, I was expecting something kind of like Roland Emmerich or Michael Bay, which again, I don't really like, uh, but to get switched out and just another thing I don't like, <laughs> I think is just was was kind of difficult. Uh, also, the logic of some of the solutions, like uh, oh, we have to self destruct the ISS just in case it crashes into the Earth. Which no, I don't that really was, that's think not what happened. Makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. The hackers uh, did it. I know, but Gerard, but they were like, why did you install a self destruct function oh, into the ISS? Okay. And he was like, just in case it crashes into Earth. But I don't think it prevents anything. Would it just be like a scatter shot? Blowing <laughs> up in sections if it's crashing into the Earth. And how does yeah, that well, stop it from crashing <laughs> into the Earth? Why, yeah, why, why does the reset not turn off the self destruct? <laughs> self-destruct yeah it's like how come it blows up dramatically in sections until the command console lasts and how come every nut and bolt of the iss needs to explode as well um and also just the monologues the end monologue by the kid was just so bad i was cringing in my chair i had goosebumps <laughs> but with that said not the worst movie i've seen uh it does have an entertainment value like ryan said i'm gonna give it a four i think okay it's not it's not what I would call a good movie. I, I unfortunately don't think I could recommend it. But fuck, if you're just like hung over on a Sunday and you just need a stupid ass movie, maybe this is the one. This is not this is this is I, I don't know. I don't think this is gonna cause any harm. And uh, you know, it also mentions climate change as a legitimate threat, uh, which is the opposite of what I thought it would take. So uh a, a light four, okay? Can can I interject shortly and say that please much like our current timeline humanity really didn't do anything to stop the climate change or change their lifestyles they just made a weapon to <laughs> to delay it it's i feel band-aid. like in our world yeah. we would have a, a pay for geostorm system yeah where uh where different like plots of land would have to pay a subscription model to have your place geostormed or to like to have Pro- your weather yeah. <laughs> i think that's the actual capitalist reality uh, sorry, Ryan Ball, go ahead. And uh, what, what do you think about this movie, movie meter? Um, Again, like you guys were, uh, I've said, I, I did find 
entertainment value watching the movie. Like like I said, watching the um, the Orlando scene after the DNC and they were driving through the lightning storm. <laughs> yeah. Lightning going everywhere. Cars blowing up left and right. She does that J turn like shoots out the guy. Great. Very entertaining. Uh, there were parts of it I couldn't like find myself getting over like in the start of it when they launched Gerard Butler up to the space station in the first place. And he's the only fucking person on the entire yeah, shuttle. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. After yes. another shuttle launched that day. Yes, like, you're getting it. Why do you think that's good, Ryan? <laughs> like, <laughs> because they had to build the infrastructure to launch shuttles up every freaking day, like multiple times. There's their buses now. They're still using a billion gallons of fuel every time. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> but I mean, after after I got over that and I like watched the shuttle launch, watching it go into space again, super like entertaining shot from it. But granted, I went into this with the premise of watching it as a disaster movie. Uh, My rating for it is probably around a five because I couldn't get over the fact that the disaster aspect of it didn't come until the last 40 minutes to an hour. um, Aside from the first like opening monologue when they described what set up the Dutch boy. Mm -hmm. All right. So your, your review is a five, right? Like straight down the middle. Straight down, straight, straight five. Straight down the middle. Not as I, bad as we think. Yeah. It's it's not something that I would probably necessarily say I'd go out of my way to watch again. If mm-hmm. I'm strolling through TV and I find it, it's got commercial breaks. I'll find myself watching it on that, leaving during commercials, <laughs> maybe come back here and there. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe this is like an FX movie that comes on in the middle of the day with a... FX, FX got the movies, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, well, Jace, what do you what do you think? What do you, what's your uh, movie meter on this? It's gonna be, it's gonna be lower than five. Um, I'm playing with some numbers in my head. And I think the the thing that I am you know still reeling from is that um, Ryan, I am very happy that you like this movie. Uh, the its value as art is so terribly low. <laughs> its value as entertainment, <laughs> its value as entertainment is moderately high. Um, this is a movie that has clearly, and I think poorly stolen things from other movies, the ice running scene with the woman running through the buildings as they're freezing. It's like directly from day after tomorrow. And I believe other movies, I think that the actors, maybe as they were directed, I I had a very big problem with the energy that actors were bringing to the scenes that they were acting in together. And it just, it could not... Going from a scene where the brother is literally listening to Gerard, Gerard Butler's like, we got to do this. And he starts like storming away. He's like, fuck you. Bye. He starts storming away from the problem. A lot of the dialogue led to like complete 180s for the character, I feel like, and how they were being built up. And it didn't really have an emotional reason. Like people can react emotionally to things. So a lot of the the actual acting in the portrayal of the character's I think brought me out of this. The the I did this because they added four zeros to my salary <laughs> motivation for literally destroying the world and thinking for some reason you would be allowed to live in it in the future. You know, it's kind of like a, that's a skeptical thing to me. Like if somebody came up there like, hey, plant this bomb, we're going to give you a spot in the hierarchy in the future after we've taken over. I'd be like, that's a lie. You're probably yeah. going to kill me too. <laughs> no, bro, trust me. Yeah. Um, you know, we should be, be conditioned to not trust those things. Um, and then I thought uh, it was it was hard for me to trust the science and have fun with it because they were teetering on pushing themselves towards a reasonable like thought maybe. So like they had the ISS and it had the spinning section so they could create gravity. But there were literal scenes with anti-gravity in yeah. places that shouldn't have it. Yeah. And if you have the technology and the science for anti-gravity, none of this should be a problem. And, <laughs> and like some of the things like we've watched these hard science movies where things are flying through space and somebody that had an eye for physics and cared about it gave direction to it. And they absolutely do not understand the impetus required for a space shuttle in the outer atmosphere because the space shuttles were literally flying around like planes like yeah. and i was like why why did you set up this whole thing with this speech at the beginning to be like we conquered weather with the three things that control it pressure temperature and water and i was like i was like oh okay this is gonna be good and then somehow a satellite 
has a nuclear fusion core in it and can shoot a laser down to earth and melt steel. And I'm like, you stopped caring about thermodynamics. You stopped caring about how you originally stopped, stopped the weather problem in the beginning. And, um, that took it away, but by God, you're right. It's it's like a four because the J turn and, and popping caps. God damn! It. Some of the best deaths we've seen of any like so, so hilarious. Getting I, shot yeah. out I of the hope, airlock. Ugh. I hope I'm the rising tide that lifted all boats here. You know, like <laughs> I, I, I didn't want you guys to bring me down. I and I and I told myself like if they don't like it, like still advocate. So I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, there isn't yeah. Any, there isn't like anything there isn't like anything stick stigmatically worth there isn't anything wrong in this movie that there are in other things like the fifth mm-hmm. element and mm-hmm. problems around the people that are in it and the director and it's like okay wow it's kind of a shitty flashy movie <laughs> that you guys were you guys were were hit were hitting me hard for a pick and geostorm yeah and uh, now now who look who loves it yeah look who loves so, geostorm so that's a good segue. <laughs> Uh, so it's my turn to pick the movie and I have been thinking about this and I I want to once again push the boundary of what we consider an end of the world movie even though this is my whole idea I think what we haven't seen yet is like an alien invasion end of the world you know so Moonfall? no get out of here I mean it's it's, the moon was the problem okay Okay. the (laughs) So I, I've come up with a list, and it, what made me think about this too was I watched the thing. You're gonna let Ryan pick. <laughs> it's Ryan Paul's pick. So, anyways, I watched the thing from your, from your list. From your list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's not a bad idea. I do have Ooh, I Picker like Wheel loaded up. Oh. Ooh, that's even more fun. So I have the Wheel of Chaos here, and nice. I've put I think seven movies into it. Holy cow! Okay. Um, let me screen share. So this is. Okay, and, and Ryan Ball, now you get to see behind the scenes how we pick right. some of these things. So it's a very arcane process. I'm going to screen share, and then I'm going to start reading them off. Do not leak this online. Yeah. People cannot know the, how the sausage is made. Uh, will not, will not. Don't worry. Sworn to secrecy. We have top one, oh Ken God. Cloverfield Lane. <laughs> okay, classic. You know, oh my aliens. God. We have Annihilation. Awesome. We'll see how widespread that is because it's kind of contained. Quiet Place. Is that the end of the real world? We don't know, but it's got people from the office in it, so normies love it. War of the Worlds. <laughs> my boy TC. Uh, I like that movie a lot. Bird Box. That was a thing. Remember Bird Box? That was crazy. <laughs> Edge of Tomorrow. Another Tom Cruise. Spoilers. Oh and also uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Is that an end of the world movie? Is it? I don't remember. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's, exactly. They okay. go to a different it's, planet. It's can not. I, can I hear a pitch for the end of the world? It's not for that. It's not an alien invasion movie. But I would. I got pushed back from Julie for including the thing because I was like, and I, and I can do the thing this way. I can do this, and she's like, you always try to find a way to shoehorn the thing <laughs> into our seasons, and so I said it wasn't fair for me to do that. Okay. I'll uh-huh. put in a different movie, one just as critically acclaimed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> Will you let Ryan give you, give thoughts on do a movie to go in here? Like he, yeah. Said- oh, if you have a suggestion, yeah. Uh, I don't off the top of my head, just because you know I have no yeah. idea what you guys have watched and haven't. Uh, well, we haven't watched any of these movies here on this list. Well, I don't know if Jace was like telling me to throw movies in. Oh, okay. I mean, if oh, you it sounded have like a you had a suggestion to add. To oh, the- me? Yeah. No, so- I was just curious about what. Uh, his selling point for how shark boy and lava girl was gonna fit as the end of the world type so apparently i looked on i don't remember the plot really okay. either but apparently on imdb it says the phrase end of the world oh in like go. the synopsis all right. <laughs> control f baby uh <laughs> yeah so and that's the whole point about this season is we're finding what counts and what doesn't you can't just watch ones that are you know for sure end of the world movies because they're all going to get the same score on this the apocalometer we got to get some ones on that meter too. Got to get some duds. All right, uh, we have two Tom okay. Cruise movies. So I'm going to spin so. it. Okay. I have already shuffled, by the way. Okay, thank you. Well, I'd be happy with any of these. Let's go. Let's go, Shark Boy. Oh, Let's go, Shark Boy. Let's go, Shark Boy. Shark Boy. Shark Boy. Okay. Ooh, Annihilation's good. Is Annihilation? Uh, thank God. Um, <laughs> what's my favorite movie on the Annihilation. list? Annihilation. Cool. Cool. Hell yeah. So that'll be next week. Ryan Ball, don't fucking leak this, okay? Yeah. All right, if people know what we're reviewing ahead of time, it'll kill the hype. Well, I'm just going to drop some hints about it. Yeah. Oh, you know? <laughs> Guys, it's, it's a... 
an end of the world movie. Don't yeah, worry about it. That's what, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Ryan Ball, uh, for this review and taking time out of your, you know, your God given life to watch <laughs> this, this movie, uh, and to review it uh, for us. Um, you know, do you like, do you have anything you want to plug? Do you want a message to send to our, our viewers? You know, you got our platform. You got the big GBGB's army listening in right now. You know, is there the, the you only wanna, message yeah. that I want to plug is for people already listening. And it's just to keep listening. Yes, you guys have a fun yes. time doing this. Oh, yeah. Yes. And yes. to oh, say, say review, review. Oh, make, make, make sure we hit that. Uh, make sure we hit that uh, yeah. rating and review. Uh, yes. Yeah. See, he's a Leave teacher, guys. Comments. He's super smart. He had to go to like a ton of schooling to know that stuff. Yeah. So he's telling you to do it. At least one extra year of school. Yeah, at least one. And so if he says it, maybe you should do it. All right. Ryan, is that you yeah. know what you could do for us? You could confiscate your students' phones, listen to 30 seconds of our yeah. podcast yeah. episode, which allows you to like it on Spotify and rate it five stars afterwards. And you could just like churn your classes. Ooh, that's, that's the extra credit homework assignment. Guys, if you can show me that you rated this podcast five stars. <laughs> Do not tell them that you were on this, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if you pitch this podcast to a high school class, would you get fired? <laughs> Probably. No, man, I just pitch it to the um, the uh, language arts department. They could use it for what analytics, you know? Yeah. What, yeah. Um, I very frequently accidentally combine two f- sayings together mm. um, into Portmanteau. one incorrect i i portmanteau today i didn't do it oh but in the last three episodes i've had one each. yeah yeah so, maybe we can have some language experts uh <laughs> analyze our podcast like i'm afraid we're gonna have like a psychologist like listen in and, and just like, like point like just call help. call us out for all of our <laughs> all of our insecurities uh yeah sweet well ryan ball you're you're welcome to come back anytime uh we love having guests on the show um and uh you know is there any movie you'd want us to like review in the future i'm always curious like uh you know, or actor there... or theme or yeah. like anything that sounds interesting uh let's go with i don't yeah, know my first thought was just twilight oh, we could do twilight. that's been yeah, a suggestion we could do twilight. yeah that's yeah, been yeah. up there I've if, been... if if not twilight then yeah. like the uh the vampire werewolf love triangle yeah kind of trope i fucking Ooh. love that shit I fucking love that. What we do in the shadows would count. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You could do that. You could do, uh, is it Underworld? Underworld. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I almost pitched a werewolf season last season, but I, we also, I also pitched a Robert Pattinson where we would have had to watch all four or five Twilight movies, Mm -hmm. which I'm still down to do. Um, those actually are fucking slap on the rewatch. The Twilight um, movies? Yeah, I mean they're terrible, but they, slap. All, they also slap. They fucking slap. <laughs> they're very vibey. Um, sweet. And so I'm psyched for Annihilation. We hope you guys will join us next week for for episode seven of the bunker. We're we're almost done with the season. So if you guys have any suggestions of what we should watch uh, for this season, if you have a favorite apocalypse movie, uh, feel free to drop us a DM, email us uh, at gbgbpodcast at gmail. Com. You could also uh, like hire a work. plane and yeah, do yeah. skywriting. Ooh, skywriting. Yeah, that's huge in LA. So if you can hire one of those and just just write in the sky like ah, fucking Twilight movies, uh, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it in here. Do you guys okay. think uh, Geostorm and Cloudy with a Chance at Meatballs are in the same universe? <laughs> oh, so like I if, do now. <laughs> if there was like a a computer virus that turned all of the weather into spaghetti. <laughs> But it was like don't the whole solve world. that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that movie a lot, and like, didn't they think of a thing to make the food like not rot on the ground? Like, didn't it disappear after a certain amount of time? I don't know. You're we'll asking about watch cloudy with a chance out. of meatballs lore. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up fandom. <laughs> Pull up fandom.com. Send us, send us what you know about cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Uh, with that, do you guys have any parting messages for our fans? <sighs> that's pretty good <laughs> do, you, wait, uh, do you guys want to do you guys want to do like a popcorn word of advice oh yeah 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 those yeah, are fun. yeah 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 so like um ryan ball like, we've done this in other episodes where like you know i'll start by saying a word and we try to form a sentence we're going to try to form a okay. word of advice like so you know i'll say one word you say the next one jace will say the next one yeah. ryan will we'll say go, the next we'll one we'll do Does two that laps make sense? how about that all right don't ever geostorm while my Face 
is face is what what do faces do <laughs> um <laughs> don't ever on, you while my face is on you could say on it could continue it and you could defer oh, to yeah Denali. we're gonna do another lap yeah fuck it <laughs> <laughs> down while my, my face, face is, is down <laughs> my tender oh <laughs> <laughs> While my face is down. <laughs> this is great advice. This is like Ouija. No, it's like it's like ter- it's fucking directing our words into like a. I don't know if I can do it. I'm, cr- I'm crying. Please, no one take this advice. Uh, okay, wait, wait. While my face is down, my tender, tender. Just think of a word. I can't think of a word. Tender one. I've gotten all conjunctions over here. It's bullshit. Uh, what, what? How many words can yeah. tender even describe? Chicken um, nuggets? Anything. Another adjective. Do it, just keep describing it. T- c- clammy. Shorts. T- tender, clammy shorts. <laughs> While my face is never geostorm, while my face is down my tender clammy shorts. <laughs> <laughs> we it's, a it's a self mantra. It's a self mantra. We got it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs>